If there are two words that I want you to remember by the end of tonight, those words would be terima kasi. There you go. All right, there you go. Terima kasi. So let's try saying that together after me, all right? Terima kasi. Great, just don't say it at the airport. Um, <laughs> terima kasi actually means thank you in Malaysian, and it's transformed how I think about gratitude in my life. So last year, I was fortunate enough to receive a Fulbright scholarship to teach high schoolers in Malaysia. So, thank you. I quit my job at Amazon, sold most of my belongings, and shipped out to Malaysian Borneo, an island home to orangutans, jungles, beaches, sea gypsies, and uh, Malaysian teenagers, over 300 of them who are my closest friends that year. So, <laughs> fast forward a few months, and as I get adapted to the culture, to the language, and to the students, I begin to realize something. Malaysians are an incredibly happy and positive culture. Their smiles are always radiating warmth, they're incredibly welcoming, they're always willing to break bread, or in their case, huge portions of rice and curry. <laughs> but, as I began to form more personal relationships with my students, I noticed a very powerful struggle forming. And it started in a classroom where I asked my students to write a thank you letter. So to me, a thank you letter is an important life skill. It's an important professional skill, wouldn't you agree? So I told them, write a thank you letter to someone you find meaningful and use that letter to explore a specific reason you are thanking them for. And what I saw in that class was an outpouring of emotion. One girl worked through broken English and wrote a stirring letter to her mother detailing this conversation she had with her mother in the kitchen that brought everyone to tears. Another girl wrote an incredible letter, incredibly mature letter of gratitude to her ex. And they all signed their letter with the same two words, terima kasi. So I decided to pull on this thread to see how far gratitude could motivate these students to speak, write, and emote in English. And in fact, I found out when their English wasn't good enough to respond to creative writing or fictional writing exercises, they really responded to writing personal narratives that were simple, direct prose, a la Ernest Hemingway. So over the next few months, this gratitude project involved hundreds of students. Um, but I began to see beneath their normally happy-go-lucky visage. Um, these teens wrote hundreds of letters touching on topics that shocked me that I didn't see before on drug abuse, on self-harm, on loss, but also on topics of cultural celebration, passionate relationships, friendship, and more. And as I spent one-on-one -on -one time editing their letters and inadvertently serving as their therapist, I began to realize that these teens routinely face emotionally taxing situations every day because their community, the town that I lived in, was beset by really conservative social norms, by poverty, by familial duty, by school pressures. And they had to process all of that while going through their own growing changes. And that they were able to say teramakasi at the end of their letters. They were able to find emotional catharsis in the face of troubled relationships. They were able to find resilience in the face of severe self-esteem issues. And they were able to find acceptance in the face of family separation. So, tonight, I hope you remember the power of teramakasi, because its power is not unique to Malaysian teenagers. You, too, can intentionally choose to be grateful. If Malaysian teens can find emotional reconciliation, improve their self-esteem, and repair their relationships, then so, too, can you and I. And so, to that end, I'd like to share an experiment with you that has helped reshape my own mind. I'd like you to spend, for the next three weeks, and maybe even tonight, find three specific things per day that you're grateful for. And I tend to write that down in my phone on a daily basis, about the length of a tweet, and sometimes it's as simple as, okay, I've got Tillamook ice cream in the fridge, I'm good. Or, <laughs> Seattle sunshine, okay, amazing. <laughs> what you don't realize is that when you reframe your mindset to be more positive and be more grateful, you inevitably affect your own mindset, and as well as those of loved ones around you. You don't need to be a Malaysian teenager to choose a termakasi way of life. So if you're interested in hearing more about my experiences or seeing my students' uh, stories and their anthology that we published on Amazon, visit my blog, easternstars.wordpress.com, or give me a shout out. All right, termakasi, and thank you for listening.